Planeswalkers as a card type were introduced to Magic the Gathering in October 2007 in the set of Lorwyn. Since then, they've become a trademark of the game, with nearly 300 cards getting printed as of time of recording. I've turned to EDH Rec to find out what the top 10 Planeswalkers are in the format of Commander. EDH Rec scrapes all your deck building sites for data, so if one Planeswalker is being run a ton, they'll know. So let's get started. Number 10 is Teferi, Master of Time. This one kind of surprised me just because I feel like I haven't heard from him in a while, but with that static ability, it doesn't take much to make this broken. Being able to use his abilities four times in one turn round when a typical planeswalker could only do it once, it's obvious what separates him from his competition. It doesn't even matter what his abilities do too much. Sure, filtering cards is somewhat decent and gets a lot more powerful once you have some graveyard interaction. It has pseudo removal and that ultimate is obviously super desirable. You shouldn't play a planeswalker just for its ultimate, but if you have an artificial way to get to that ultimate, it's perfect. Number nine is Nissa who shakes the world. I don't think there is a mono green deck on earth that doesn't want this card there. Even price wise, you can pick this card up for $5. Being able to double our mana output is certainly super strong, but that's not where it stops. One of the biggest things a planeswalker should be able to do is defend itself. It should either make bodies or destroy things. And Nissa's bodies not only get out and block her, but since they have vigilance, they can go after people and then stay back and block. And again, when you're arguing, should I play this planeswalker or not? Don't ever look at the ultimate, but this ultimate is game breaking. Number eight is Ashiok Dream Render. The uncommon planeswalkers with static abilities like Ashiok exist in this weird gray area where they feel almost like just glorified enchantments. Don't get me wrong, this card is strong. Not only does this trap our opponents to the boards and hands they have already, but this also shuts off fetch lands, which is a definite plus. This card is essentially the answer to what a big part of the casual Magic the Gathering community wants. This lets you just power down a game of commander. If you don't like tutors, now your opponents can. And I throw around the term casual, but this is perfect for punishing more competitive decks. Number seven is Garuk Primal Hunter. This card feels like what the commander format was built for. Just a bunch of flashy plays that won't win the game outright, but it'll at least push you in the right direction. Garuk protects himself here because he makes bodies, but I'm definitely running him here for that tick down. I love running this card in like Voltron or maybe another deck that I know reliably there is going to be a super big creature out there. This card is just hilarious there. I almost feel a false sense of nostalgia for this card. This card reminds me of like the good old days of magic, when decks were just thrown together from your collection. My heart is happy that this card's on this list. Number six is Elsbeth's Son's Champion. Speaking of making my heart happy, Elsbeth, not to mention Elsbeth's Son's Champion, is my favorite planeswalker in all of magic. She's everything white wants to do on a card. She can build up our board while tearing everyone else's down. And I think that's what makes her special. Commander has this weird relationship with board wipes that don't actually hit the whole board. No matter how you package it, you're typically better off just running one of the board wipes that hits everything. But since Elspeth builds a board and then also threatens to wipe the board again, I love her. It makes it worth it. And I've talked about how a planeswalker needs to be able to defend itself. She does just that. Number five is Ugin, the Spirit Dragon, probably the flashiest planeswalker in all of magic. You can bomb specific faces, places, or creatures, or you can just blow up the whole board. I think it's a rite of passage as a magic player to slam down an Ugin onto the board and then just mess everything up. He's tied for the most expensive mana value for a planeswalker, which I feel like is instantly setting off alarms for like Timmy's out there. He's removal on a stick, which I feel like is a big thing that a lot of commander decks are missing out on. Being colorless definitely helps him out to get onto a list like this. Like Elspeth can only be in decks that are white, have some white. He can be in anything, which makes sense that number four is Ugin the Ineffable. Continuing that idea of anyone can run this card, this Ugin just checks off so many boxes. Ramp, card advantage, a body to protect itself, removal. Sure, the ramping is at 100%, but who isn't running just a bunch of artifacts in any of their decks? And since he's colorless, a deck that struggles with any of the parts that I mentioned earlier can run this to directly address that problem and then also get some additional value on the sides. This card is just all value and does not have time to mess around with any of your shenanigans. Number three is Liliana Dreadhorde General, where we've had a lot of cards that have gone onto this list because they're straight value or there's some shenanigans mixed in. Liliana is just a straight powerhouse. It frankly surprises me there can be two planeswalkers better than Liliana. Anytime you put the phrase draw a card, onto a card, 
player's ears start to perk up. The fact that it isn't tied to some sort of limiter, like you can only do this once a turn, and actually it's quite repeatable, just makes this card bananas. Just that static ability is enough for me to love her. Then she makes bodies to defend herself, and they can also feed into her minus four. Getting everybody to sacrifice two creatures can be just what we need to stop a pesky hexproof or indestructible creature. And if we're activating that, we're normally sacrificing two zombies to draw two cards. I will always take that trade. Again, you aren't playing her for her ult, but her ult is pretty good. If you can hit it, you've put yourself into an insurmountable lead. I love this card, but then again, I would probably play a six mana enchantment that just says, whenever a creature you control dies, draw a card. But that's because I have a crippling addiction to aristocrats. Number two is Jace, Wielder of Mysteries. Now I've said a couple of Planeswalkers in this list can straight up win games, but that's more so it puts you in a decent lead, it gives you a lot of value, you have to ride things out. No, Jace can actually win games. So much so that the phrase, you win the game, is on him twice. This card is very much so a combo piece. I said putting draw a card on a card is enough to make players ears perk up, while putting you win the game on a card is enough to make players salivate. Jace isn't the only card that can do this. I also like Thassa's Oracle and Lap Maniac, but in Commander, repetition isn't the worst thing. Jace dodges creature removal where the other two don't. Being both redundant and slightly different is enough to make a combo piece a top card. And now the number one Planeswalker in Commander. Coming all the way from the Mystic Monastery on Tarkir, standing at a whopping five loyalty, we have Narset, Parter of the Veil. I don't know how to describe how I feel about this card. On one hand, I'm not surprised at all that it made the top 10, but on the other hand, I'm kind of surprised it got all the way to one. I think there are a lot of parallels between Narset and the Ashiok that I mentioned earlier. Sure, they're both uncommon planeswalkers that are essentially enchantments, but Narset also shuts off a massive part of Commander. One of the biggest pillars in Commander is card advantage. It's often debated which is more essential to the game, card advantage or ramp, but you can't deny if you take one of those away, you just ruin someone. If you aren't drawing cards, you're just gonna run out of gas and everyone's just gonna leave you behind. Narset is putting that limit on your opponents. It's a simple trick, but it's super powerful. Narset not only works as this limiter on your opponents, but she also works as a decent combo piece. Now it doesn't exactly win the game, but if you play Narset and like any group wheel effect, you will use the wheel like it's any given wheel, but then all your opponents will put their cards away and then draw one. So now it functions as a combo piece. And I tend to think the best combo pieces in Magic are the cards that can stand on their own and exist without necessarily needing that wheel in this sense. So there is our top 10. It makes me kind of happy that the number one card on this list is only like a dollar. Other formats have the problem where if you're trying to crack into the format and you want to grab a playset of the best card, it's like 50 bucks and now you're getting a place out of it so it's like 200 bucks and that's just a fraction of the deck the more affordable commander and magic can be the better it is a little concerning that most of these cards came from war of the spark i get it that war of the spark had more planeswalkers than most sets but it doesn't feel like it should offset it that much war of the spark is in the past by a bit now hopefully they've learned their lesson maybe they swung too far the other way because the most recent card on this list is still three years old at this time. Either way, I'm always interested to see the dynamics of a planeswalker and to see how they balance it and try to evolve it over the years. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to bolt your birds.